Com. In divorce, real estate is one of the largest assets of the marital estate, and it must be considered carefully. You'll want a specialist in divorce real estate to help you do that. You'll want the Gifford Group to help you uncover the unknowns and make informed decisions throughout the process. The professionals at the Gifford Group will help you get the facts, which will help remove the fear that can run high through the process, and you'll make better decisions. Get the facts and remove the fear. Contact the Gifford Group today at thegiffordgroup.net. There's a lot at stake in a divorce, and you want trusted and specialized counsel. Houston attorney Craig Haston is board certified by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization and has more than 25 years of legal experience. And experience is everything. Craig will help you make the best choices for your family and your future. When divorce seems to be your next step, contact one of the most recognized attorneys in Texas, Craig Haston. To schedule a consultation, call 281-890-1300 or go to HastonLaw.com. Achieving the best outcome in divorce can be extremely tough when alcohol abuse is part of the process, especially around co-parenting. But there's help with remote alcohol monitoring. Soberlink is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to prove their sobriety. Soberlink uses real-time alerts, facial recognition, and tamper detection to ensure accurate and reliable results. With Soberlink, you can be confident that your kids are with a sober parent. For an exclusive $50 off your device and to download a Technologies to Help with Divorce resource guide that I developed with Soberlink, visit soberlink.com backslash DCH. And friends, welcome back. We're dancing in the studio over there. Our little uh, bump music in and out. Let's light up the stars. I think I can't. I can't exactly remember. Um, yeah, light up the stars. Perfectly chosen for the show. Uh, the intro is now called "Bouncing Back." Mm. And when I first debuted that, uh, um, Richard Mendelo, uh, whom I'm on Courageous Christianity with as the wingman, he said it should be called "Bouncing Forward." Very true. Instead of, so I was like, I like hey, that. that's a really good distinction. <laughs> well, I'm not going to rename the song, but because I, you know, I purchased it, licensed it. <laughs> but we are talking about bouncing forward. Um, hopefully we're not bouncing all over the place. We're talking about if to keep that going, bouncing into a blended family. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not just haphazard. It's planned. And, you know, I I referenced earlier Ron L. Deal, and interestingly enough, uh, and I'll just speak a little bit to my personal story, when I was married, I was the stepmother of actually four children, um, three who actually lived with us, and uh, I got married, became a stepmother, moved to a new state and uh, at the same time started a new job. That's a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. And what I'll say, neither of us were prepared. Neither of us had uh, the conversations you all have been talking about. Um, And folks, we're talking to Amber and Scotty Gifford just to bring you in if you're joining us in the second segment. Here uh, and they're talking about their personal journey of a step family, and I'm sharing mine. Um, I think better the word now is blended families mm-hmm. because that word step and uh, has such negative negative meaning mm-hmm. to it for people. And but what I heard for you all is that there was awareness of yourselves. Um, expectation setting, appropriate expectation setting with your eyes wide open and then good communication. And I want to read, so uh, back to when I was a, um, a, a blended family mother, I guess, instead yes. of saying a stepmother, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really was always trying to learn and figure this out because it was not an easy time. I think it's it's a really hard role to play. Um, he says in it was an interview that was done on CBN.com, the Christian Broadcasting Network. He said this, the reality of remarriage is that life in a step family is much more difficult than most couples anticipate. He believes the health of the couple's relationship is interdependent with the health of the step family. And mm. that's what I heard in there for you. And you all said, you know, we talked about what went well. So now I want to kind of turn things because we can learn from also what what might have not gone so well. So are there is there anything now looking back in your 
evolution of this blended family where we are today, recently married. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, is there anything that maybe you would have changed or that you see now that you could have improved upon? So Amber, we'll start with you. So I think for me, I mean, all kids have kid issues and this just, just coupled with divorce on top of it. And we were talked a lot about this yesterday and the day before, like, I feel as though I probably should have had more discussions regarding respect for my children to give to Scotty. They are respectful and we do have boundaries with them, but I don't think I had enough conversations that, Hey, when he's saying, listen to your mother, he's not telling you what to do. He's supporting me and you need to respect that and not mouth back. Mm. So they tend to sometimes mouth back and you have to be very cognizant of the age and who you can talk back with and who you can discipline. Obviously younger children you can discipline, but the older teenagers, he cannot. So he supports me. And sometimes they have words back, like I said, and I feel like I just told him last night, like, I think that I should have had more conversations like, hey, he he's not trying to take the place of your father, but he does care about you and me. And because he cares about me, he cares about you. And together we're all raising this family with your dad and his wife, too. Like, it's about being respectful that we're adults and parents for you. So I wish I would have just had more conversations before we moved in together. That's yeah. For me. Uh I, I think it makes a lot of sense, and I want to kind of just put a pin in that for a second mm-hmm. and then uh, get Scotty's feedback mm-hmm. and then come back with a, a couple of thoughts around that. So what would you say that looking back now, Scotty, what maybe you would have changed or um, uh, improved or done better? Yeah, I, I agree with Amber's assessment, though. Like, it, it is going to come back to communication, and I think it's those those, those areas where we didn't communicate uh, as much upon or specifically with the children, right? I mean, I think we did, I think we did a good job of communicating like what the plan was, where we're going and where we're going to live and how that was going to happen. But I think there was those conversations about too, with Amber's point, like, you know, I, I didn't have this conversation with, with my boys and saying, Hey, you know, uh, this is the expectation that we're going to sit down and have dinner, uh, you know, (laughs) going forward and that you're expected to sit down, right. And, And not get up like, because there's some things that, you know, happening at my house being a single dad, right. That, I didn't have time for maybe, or just didn't, or was more lax on, right? Some right. of that discipline that I, going into it, you know, oh, you know, it's not that big a deal, but it's a big deal to say to Amber, this like to, to sit down and have those family dinners, right? And I, I agree with her and I think it is important, but I don't think I had that mindset and talked to them about that, how important it was to her, right? Because I think they need to respect her decisions and need to respect her place as well too, right? Cause she's an adult. The adults in the household need to have and be shown that respect um, of one another. Right. So, um, and respect is, I mean, even oops. today at our age is hard for people to really grasp. Right. And I think so let alone too. like being a child. Right. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. um, one of the things I do when I'm not on the radio show is I, I teach a class and, and at the root of that class is respect. And we talk about respect one Oh one and, where does respect start? Starts with yourself Mm -hmm. and you can't have it. You can't give away what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear going back to segment one, you all, you both had that foundation of respect for one another. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so that then the second step with that is leadership. And so what I'm hearing is maybe having given that some more thought, you would have wanted to maybe lead the children better. Let's just bottom line though, say it's children. But I want to go back then and, and I'm driving here because not that I uh, knew that we would end up here, but it's something that I feel like I was sorely lacking in my marriage and obviously I'm divorced. And <laughs> so there was something that was not right. But again, back to Ron L. Deal. Ron is clear to point out that making the marriage a significant priority does not mean neglecting the children, nor that your spouse gets to be the total focus of your attention. Loving your spouse should never come at the expense of the children, says Ron. It means that you seek a balance between the love and energy you give your children with what's necessary to sustain and build your marriage. And so here's where I want to go. And I talk a lot about this, but the triangle Mm -hmm. Uh, as a Christian, God first, the marriage next, your partners, your spouses, Mm -hmm. and then family and work. 
because the kids can't be taken care of if there's no marriage, right? Correct. And if you don't have a strong marriage, expecting the and, and the, the weak marriages are expecting the other to fill your void. Exactly. If you don't have that direct line to God, it and and that triangle is the strongest um, mm-hmm. uh, formation that is out there. Uh, just even aside from it being God at the top. Uh, then everything crumbles. And that was what was missing. And I even remember uh, as I was, my marriage was falling apart. My my dad even got involved and spoke to my now ex-husband and said, oh, wow. all she's wanting is to put God first, your, your marriage next, and then you all put the children together first. Right. And so what I'm hearing is you've got the formation right. I think so. I mean, we, but we learned the hard way. So we did learn. Isn't that how we always learn? I learned? know. Darn it. We just, we had five topics that he and I agreed were the most important. And we went over those and we were pretty much on the same page. Um, I mean, it was disciplining the kids, finances, religion, where we're going to live, our compatibility with each other, our physical compatibility. We were on the same page on everything. There were some things in discipline that were different. Like he was saying, we had to come together and, we literally talk about those all the time. Like, what did, what did you see here? What did I see? How could we have done this better? But you really have to um, take a step back from your pride and the I'm right and go, okay, where did I take accountability in this scenario? Because you probably did somewhere, even if it's 1%. You know, again, we're coming back to that that book that's falling apart if you're mm-hmm. not on the same page, i.e. that communication. And you yep. know what's really interesting? And, and folks, if you're listening to the show and you're going, okay, so I get it, but and I hear that they did it well, but how do I do it now? And what's really cool is you guys just said something very important, five topics that were mm-hmm. most important. And you know, we actually got that advice with some from uh, some friends when we were married having the struggles of a blended family. And um, this advice was pick five things between the two of you that you both will commit to. That is the, that's the right thing for the family Mm -hmm. and make sure you carry those five things out. Well, you know, the end of the story, it didn't work out for us. We didn't, we, we may have chosen, I was the one trying to lead that, but that's the other thing. And maybe when we come back, we'll, we'll speak to that too is, um, you've got to have a leader in the mm-hmm. family and, and both of those, um, the, the, both spouses have to understand the roles, but clarity too around those five things. And so pick those five things, those topics Agreed. that you're going to both commit to. And then when we come back into segment three, I want to talk about that leadership role, uh, because a lot of the struggles I think there is, is we don't, we don't really know how to lead, even if we know allow that. someone else to lead. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's exactly it. So folks, what we're talking about is, uh, moving through, moving forward through mm-hmm. divorce and beyond and to when that beyond might be remarriage. And if that remarriage involves children. And so we're tackling blended families today, uh, here wanting to help you, wanting to help you move forward if that's how you're moving forward. And when we come back, we're going to talk about something that I think really can uh, cause a bit of challenge. And we want your blended families to stay a family. 